things that I particularly loved is just how you opened scenes as paintings themselves. Mm. Why did you decide to go that route? I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not rocket science. We're making a film about one of the greatest painters that ever lived. Um, hey, let's make it look like paintings. You know, it's, it, it's that simple. The thing is, for any history of art aficionados out there, it's not just Vermeer. There's a whole bunch of other painters as well, because it, it was a great, great period for genre painters. So without wanting to get into a long, boring list, if you look through your art history books, you'll see Hobbemar, Paulus Potter, Ter Borg, Bruegel, you name it. Um, so we got to steal from the best. Nice. Not a bad way to go for your first peach poem. Mm -hmm. um, how much of you was just jumping up and down and clapping your hands in childlike glee during this? A lot. It's funny, because normally people ask me the other question, weren't you terrified, scared to within an inch of your life? And actually, the opposite was true. You're always scared. Before you start any film, you're always scared. Because how's it going to go? Is it, is it, is it going to be a disaster? There's so much pressure on, on you. Pressure of time, pressure of money. But the chance to work with great, great people like Eduardo Serra, the cinematographer, Ben Van Os, the designer, to work with Colin and Scarlett, and to be able to do a story that was very, very cinematic, that doesn't rely on dialogue, where you can make beautiful images and it doesn't get in the way of the story. It's, it's, it's part of, of, of what it's all about. That was just a fantastic opportunity. What, was there a steep learning curve or did it all just kind of... Well, you know, this is my first feature, but I've been slaving away in the galleys of British television for 15 years now. I did five years making um, as an editor, five years making documentaries, about five years doing TV drama. So I had a lot of practice. Um, the first day you walk out, it's kind of scary because the scale on which you're working is that much larger. But, you know, you get used to that very quickly. And um, it was a joy. I worked with a great producer who made everything very easy for me, just protected me and allowed me to do my thing. Um, and to be honest, to be frank, I'd picked well. I'd picked a good crew who were all, we were all on the same train, heading in the same direction. The actors were great to work with. No one was there going, hey, you haven't made a movie before, kid. What's going on? So, so it, was, it was a joy. I'm afraid no, no horrible stories. You know, people didn't hide in their trailers and you know, there was no one doing drugs behind the craft services table or anything like that. So no shocking stories, I'm afraid. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to wear like a huge ruff to command respect. Mm, well, that could be a good idea. I think I'll do that on the next movie, so thanks well, for the tip. Especially if it's in the future. <laughs> I never knew that wearing a big ruff could command respect. Normally, ridicule, I find. <laughs> Interestingly, in this scenario, it's just, it's a fun little trick I learned. What about the physical logistics of making it? Was there anything that sort of was a tough thing to get through or an yeah, easy thing? What was, I'll tell you what was tough. Luxembourg in the winter, minus 15. Nippy. Very nippy. Um, so for two reasons. One is that you're sitting out all day long, 12 hours. Now, if you're an abominable snowman, maybe you're used to it. But me, I wasn't used to it. What it does to your skin. You need <laughs> I moisturizer. I can't tell you, you really do. Um, and, but the difficult thing with all the canals that you see in the film, um, some of the time they're meant to be frozen, but a lot of the time they're not. So we'd turn up in the morning and it was so cold the canals would have frozen over. So we would lose an hour, an hour and a half, while we had to hire frogmen to <clears throat> jump in, smash the ice up, get these big nets and drag the ice out. And then they'd kind of tie it up just out of shot. So that was, you know, that was a bit dull. Um, then, of course, what happened was that the weather turned slightly warmer towards the end and we had these big ice scenes. And so we'd had real ice, we got rid of it. <clears throat> when we needed our real ice, we had to put our own fake ice in. I tell you, it's <laughs> madcap. It's madcap, that's movies. Let's say it's a few years on down the road, you're looking back, why are you, what did you gain the most out of this experience? Oh, well, In just, a nutshell. just <laughs> to make your first movie is an amazing thing. I mean, you know, I've wanted to direct a movie for years and years and years. To be honest, until fairly recently, I didn't think I'd, I would do it. I thought, right, I'm in TV, we don't make that many movies in Britain, will I get my chance? So just to have done it, and then, it's open doors. The reception has been so great that, you know, scripts are coming in. Hey, I get to make another one. Fantastic. Rock on. Well, it's marvelous and Thank you. very luscious to look at. Thank you. Thanks for making it. Thank you, cousin. <laughs> sure, cousin. See you later. Take care. Bye. Bye.